Yo, we got it. What's happening, man? Got it to work. Yes. Indeed. How's the pool party going? It's good, man. The kids are raging. Uh, the weather's, uh, it's actually, it's not as brutal as it's been. It's been like 100 degree awfulness here. So it's actually a decent day. So I can't complain. Yeah. No, same here. Like it was, we're probably in, in the mid eighties and I'm, I'm happy oh, that we're yeah. there. You it's know funny I mean? how that's like beautiful again after like the 90 plus and you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your night to come hang out with me. Heck yeah, man. No worries, man. Thanks for uh, doing the interview. I'm stoked to, uh, to talk some metal. Hell yeah. Oh, what are you drinking? Uh, you know, a very unmetal uh, seltzer. So, <laughs> hey, whatever. Bomb, bomb pop flavored, you know. <laughs> it doesn't get much less metal than bomb pop flavored seltzer. I don't know. It reminds you of being a kid, right? Exactly. So <laughs> Rock and roll. So, uh, Brian, the, the question that's on everyone's mind, I'm I'm going to just throw it right out there up front. Where are you guys at with recording the Shads? Yeah, man. Uh, new music is moving forward uh, at a very nice and steady and well thought out pace. Uh, we've probably got instrumentally, I'd say, six to seven songs that are like there. Uh, and I recorded vocals uh, last about a week and a half ago with Zeus. And we got about two songs done while I was out there. I flew out to Boston for an overcast show uh, with Unearth to celebrate their 20th anniversary of the oncoming storm. So while I was flying out, I was like, man, I got to at least hit the studio. And we raged through a couple songs. Uh, it's in it. The two we did, there's some melodic moments, but it's it's probably some of the most brutal stuff we've done since. I don't know, man, maybe even like the of one blood days. Like there's some there's even some like black metal influence riffs. There's some like straight up just chromatic death metal stuff. It's 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 pretty brutal. I even brought some like witchy kind of screams to the to the party. So we're we're pretty stoked, man. And uh I don't know release wise, I think we're gonna kind of do it in chunks, which is great. Like the new way of being able to release music instead if we had to make a 10 song album traditional way, it, it would take us we wouldn't be looking until like mid next year, but now I think we'll right. be able to get music out before the end of this year for sure. Even if it's just like an EP's worth of like songs, you know, like like three or four or something. So yeah, but that's, it's, it's it is moving along nicely, man. We couldn't be more excited. That's super awesome. I know a lot of people are, you know, really excited to hear some new shadows fall. Uh, obviously, it's been twelve years at this point. <laughs> It's been a while, man. It's been a while. So yeah, we we're very excited that it's actually to get like two rough mixes with vocals and everything, and even like backup vocals. Matt was laying down, you know, harmonies and death metal stuff, and to get a not finished but like fully realized couple of songs, kind of lit that fire. We we're like, all right, this is happening, you know, like <laughs> yeah. And man, and and we're very stoked on what what it is. It's everything we've always done with even a little bit of uh, of extra spice on it so i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked and it's nice not having like kind of record label deadlines or agendas there's no rushing there's no uh business plan in place we're just writing the sickest songs we can write that we want to hear at our own pace you know so it doesn't yeah. get much better than that no that's that's a great spot to be in i think for any artist right because it's like so, it's it's the first album all over again you there is no pressure you can just do whatever you're gonna do exactly it's that classic uh music trope of uh your first album you had all the time in the world to write it whereas your second one they're like yeah we need that turned in in the next 12 months go you know yeah you're like oh <laughs> so shit. we've had a lot of time but also i've got two riff masters between you know john just that dude every time he turns around he's there's another sick riff like you know it's just crazy so uh having that and also you know he with anthrax he gets to record his solos and write all that stuff but charlie and scott write all the riffs so he's you know just been sitting on this stuff so he was ready to unleash it on the world and uh and now it's time it's finally time hell yeah so how does it feel for you you know after after so long like you guys getting back together obviously two and a half ish years ago and and now you're you're playing pretty regularly i think you know it seems yeah it it ramped up it ramped up pretty quick where uh we didn't really know uh where things were going to go after that first kind of reunion show 
we knew like we we had ta been talking about playing together for like again for a little while because when we stopped touring it wasn't because we didn't want to like play with each other that we didn't want to make music we just life was just in the way man you know like i had my second kid paul just had a kid john had the opportunity of a lifetime to be in the big four you know uh so just yeah. things were happening and honestly for us just uh business wise it was hard to make a full-time living off of the band uh, at that time so it, we had to make some tough decisions and it just made sense to kind of step away from the road and take some you know just take five and and reevaluate and kind of get re-energized we were physically i was as burnt as you could possibly be it had been like two decades on the road of just hard living you know hard partying and screaming my ass off every night i needed to just kind of give my neck a break you know <laughs> give my throat a break and uh to come back out and see the response at the first show was just so overwhelming but then when we started getting you know, offers for festivals and some fun one-off shows here and there. We just couldn't say no. And it's definitely a dance to get everyone's schedules to work together, you know, yeah. like between Jason playing in Overkill and, and, you know, John and Anthrax and, and me having to fit in between soccer tournaments and, you know, <laughs> for the kids and all that stuff uh, and having a full-time job. Uh, it's been a challenge, but worth it, you know, and it's also made us prioritize the right shows, you know, like uh, try to play some festivals where you can play in front of a lot of people at one time uh, in different areas, uh, as well as picking and choosing headlining shows where we get to do something fun, like the 25th anniversary of, of uh, you know, uh, 20th anniversary of War Within, things like that. Uh, yeah. That makes it, you know, makes it at least makes sense. So we're not just out there just killing ourselves and going crazy, but we're, we're picking and choosing and doing it right. So. Well, that's, you know, that's the important thing when everyone's so busy, you know, obviously, you know, from with Jason overkill category seven. And I, I feel like he's got 12 other things in yeah, the fire. If it was up to him. He'd be in 50 bands. Like yeah. for real, you know? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's... And man, that category seven stuff. I wasn't ready for that. He, he I, on the ride from the, the Jersey show, he played me that album. I was like, holy shit. Like, you got John Bush to come in and just kill it on this thing. <laughs> Dude, what and what a what a great vocalist Bush is too, oh, right? He's amazing, man. Amazing. Uh and I've always kind of for my melodic vocals, I've always come from that approach of that they gotta have like some toughness and some intensity, that sort of Chuck Billy, John Bush type of stuff. So uh I was and also happy to see John playing some shreddy, like crazy metal again it was cool, you know? Yeah. Because man, Bill and, and Mike Orlando are going nuts on that record. They're just shredding all over the place. So it's 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 cool. That's cool that's that's really awesome. You know what I've heard of it, it it's fucking fantastic, and I can't wait to to hear it all, you know? Yeah, you will be stoked. So right on. So did did you get into another band? Uh, I've been in too many bands. Uh, right now, uh, between Shadows Fall and Overcast, has kind of been doing some stuff. My a, a band called Downpour that I I started with uh, Derek Kurzweil, who used to be in Unearth for a while, and uh, a couple of other local mass metal dudes. Uh, Matt, who's actually in Livingage with John and from Shadows Fall, we started a band probably in man had to be like 2014. Uh, and we took us forever to finally get some songs out. And then it's taken us another like five or six years to get the next batch out. So that's, that's cooking. And then I also have hell night here in St. Louis, which is way more of a kind of punk rock meets like, I don't know, a uh, deep purple, like with like, if it was played by motorhead type stuff, you know? <laughs> so oh, wow. I, I can never stop like just jamming, you know, I'm always got something going on. Uh, whether it's full time or just for fun, there's always something going on. So, yeah, I th you know, I think that's a funny thing with musicians is like when you're when you get that bug early on to be creative, it doesn't stop. You know, you just. Yeah. I just oh, it becomes keep... part of who you are, man. It's like I always joke with my wife. I'm like, trust me, like everyone will be a lot happier if I have a chance to go and scream into a microphone instead of at you guys. You know, trust me, it's better for everybody. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Have it's they... like I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. And if I don't get that release, like everyone's going to notice. You know? <laughs> yeah. So when when you guys played that show, uh, December of 21, what was what was going through your mind, like the build up to it? You know, I was it was pretty I don't want to say nerve wracking, but we wanted to come out and 
play better than we ever had, be more ready than we ever had. Uh, Shadow Spa was not known for our rehearsal uh, commitment, I guess would be the word, because we toured so much. We're always like, I mean, we know these songs, you know, like, and so practices would be like us getting together, running through a few things, working on some new stuff, and then just like drinking at Matt's house, you know? <laughs> and uh, so for this though, we, we like buckled down. Uh, not only did those guys instrumentally rehearse like nonstop, uh, physically, we were all like trying to get back in shape and, you know, be ready for the stage. Cause that's the one thing you kind of can't recreate in the practice space is that adrenaline and that energy. And we didn't want to get out there and after two songs be like hunched over, you know, like looking for the oxygen tank, you know? Yeah. So, so I, myself personally, that, that kind of began my more intense fitness journey that I'm still on now where I started really focusing on cardio and just getting kind of back into shape you know as you get older it's it's before i didn't have to work at it now you got to work for that shit you know uh so rolling into it we were i wasn't nervous about us being ready i was nervous just about like man like i, I don't want to get sick right before it i don't want to like you know have something just weird go wrong where all of a sudden your throat's shot and you just can't do what you want to do we knew the crowd was going to be crazy and it, it it couldn't have worked out better. Like it couldn't have been a better show. Everyone's families were there. Our kids were on the side of the stage. My parents were at the soundboard. Uh, the audience itself was, we recognized so many faces uh, between people locally, as well as people who traveled. We'd known for years. It, it was in such a overwhelming, like just joyous occasion, man. Uh, it was, it was, it went as well as it could. And, and uh, looking back on it and hearing, even seeing videos, we're like, man, we were we were a well-oiled machine for that show. And we realized, like, maybe we should have been practicing all those years. Yeah. You know, when we practice, we're pretty damn good. <laughs> it's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're like, ah, hey, you know, if you actually work at this, you get better at it. <laughs> yeah, you guys absolutely crushed that night. That was uh, me and two buddies of mine took a trip. We flew out of uh, Kentucky, flew up for it, and man. Oh, awesome, man. Well, thanks for traveling all the way up for that. That that was that was the other thing that made it so special is so many people we talked to had stories like that where they're like, oh, me and my friend hadn't seen you since, you know, Mayhem in 2010. And we just didn't want to miss this. We flew out from wherever. It's like that. As a band, there's nothing cooler and more inspiring than that, because your music stuff that you had to express actually connected and and meant something to other people from all over the world. And that's I, as a musician, I don't think there's any better reward or feeling than that, you know? Right. Well, and the, the relationships that it creates among the fans, you know, is like it, it music to me is like the ultimate connector to people. You know, if you guys are on the same level with music, they're going to be some of your best friends and you're going to get the, the opportunity to do shit where it's like, Oh, shadows falls reuniting. Let's, you know, let's take a weekend. We, yeah, we got to get there. We got to go road trip, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes it'll be very introverted people who normally in social things aren't out there getting out and about, but the music brings them all together. And then you have your own tribe, you know, you have your own world that, that really unites so many people. And I've seen that. That's what got me into kind of underground music. I was really young when I started going to Boston hardcore shows and when I, I saw that scene after going to arena shows for years as well, I saw this small scene and was like, whoa, I didn't know this was even possible. Like that you could just have this many people in a, in a small room who were there for the same reasons, who became instant friends just because you had a T-shirt of a band that you didn't think anyone else knew about. It yeah. blows your mind. It's it's so co such a cool. Oh, I think I lost you. And that feeling still is the same. I, yeah. I'll be in the grocery store and see someone with like a dismember shirt. And I'm like, oh my God, you got to be kidding me. Like, we, we need to talk, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, all the time. Literally, like, I can't tell you how many people just because like I'm wearing a shirt or they're wearing a shirt. It's like, oh, you know, my wife, yeah. my wife. It's like that, that stepbrothers. Are we best friends? You know, they're yeah. like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> uh, well, my wife early on, uh, when we first started dating, you know, she had a trauma, whatever other shit. She always thought like, oh, you're going to go to a show. You're going to talk to a girl. And like, I don't, I'm not, I'm there for the band. So she yeah. goes to a show with me and she's like, you're not talking to me. I'm like, I'm fu I'm here for the band. Yeah, I'm, 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 in the, I'm immersed in the moment. Like, 
Yes, I, I love you, but yes. Yeah, yeah. but Opeth is playing or something, yeah. you know? Like, it's yeah, like, whatever. Happening. <laughs> she goes, so, so it took her a couple of shows and eventually she's like, oh, like, I was so worried you were going to talk to girls and you don't give a shit about girls at shows. Like, no, I I really nope. don't. I just want to watch the well, band. Well, and she probably also realized that metal shows, the population is much more skewed male anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a sausage <laughs> fest, right? <laughs> yeah. more more dudes in black long sleeve shirts than than girls for sure yeah <laughs> but we yeah. welcome all the ladies come on down come to the show right come to the show have a good time you'll you will be protected <laughs> exactly uh so for you like uh i know you were in you start you were playing in overcast since like 91 ish yeah 1990 91 is when we kind of started yeah yep. how do you guys have plans for new music at this point? Or are you just playing out like once in a while? I don't think we'll ever write new overcast. We talked about it and even kind of maybe kicked some riffs around, but that was such a different time. I mean, we literally, we were 14, 15 year old kids. Uh, Mike D was the only one with a driver's license when that band started. And uh, to we wrote such manic, weird songs and, that I even like trying to sing the, like we just had to, you know, we played a show a little while ago and we did the full first album and the amount of syllables I would put in and the crazy, you know, vocal lines. I'm like, what were we thinking? So to get in that headspace is almost impossible. The closest thing is when we did death ray vision was like a modernized approach to that, you know, but it did not sound like overcast. We're like, we can't call it overcast. Right. Um, but so they I don't think there'll ever be new overcast music. Um, but it's fun to get together with those guys and play shows. You know, we like literally some of my best friends since I was in middle school are in that band, you know. So uh and, and it brings out all our friends from that era and it's just it's a blast. Like that that show it with Unearth and All Out War and, and Bleeding Through is so much fun because like so many of us have been in that scene for so long and to see us all still out there like kind of going through it is is crazy. But uh, but yeah, it's and it's just insane that people care about songs we wrote 30 plus years ago is 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 pretty amazing as well that it still resonates. But as far as new ones, I'm like, yeah, I don't I just I don't know if we could do it. And also it's tuned to E standard. No one plays an E standard anymore. Like, you know, no. <laughs> so we kept it heavy and E. Yeah. Well, back then that was almost everyone. Right. Like. You've... exactly you know, exactly everyone was you know now it's it's like it's so unheard of now it's like oh man you can still be heavy and e trust me yeah well and that was you know that was also the days of tape trading right like you you're like oh i i sent a tape to this dude out in you know thailand or wherever it was and and you're gonna get something crazy back and you're like yes yeah you know so wait. crazy and, and that that's one of those things it had to be sneaked out you know, like whether it was going to a small record store and buying seven inches that you didn't know the band, but you could tell by the cover that they were a hardcore band or seeing a death metal album you never heard of. But you're like, that's definitely a death metal band and just taking a chance. I uh, Now it's cool that the p kids are exposed to so much music at once, but it does take out some of that, like, you know, seeking it out and, and stumbling into things or like just having that cool neighbor who turns you on to bands. Now, if you like a band, it'll just suggest 2000 more bands that you you should get into, which is great. And it's 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 great for bands to get discovered, but it does take some of that like uh, treasure hunt out of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not like when we were growing up, when you'd go to a record store and you'd be like, oh man, that artwork is so cool. I hope it's good. You know? Yeah, totally. And you're going to buy it though. You're going to take the chance. And every yep. now and then you get screwed. You know, there's those classic ones where like people would buy a Molly Hatchet record because there's a dude with like a giant axe, you know, a flaming motorcycle. And then you put it on, you're like, oh, this is not thrash metal. <laughs> yeah, this is not what I thought it was. I, yeah, I, I did that with a Molly Hatchet record. As a matter of fact, I was like, shit. There you go. Like, oh, I think whatever. Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf was probably the biggest uh, one of those. You know, you're like, it's called Bad Out of Hell. This looks insane. And you're like, nah, nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no no not at all but that was you know those were the days right because it was it was a little bit of like i really want to find something cool and okay i bought it please let it be really fucking cool or i'm gonna be mm -hmm. like yeah just 
it's just out, you know. But even well, it's though not, it's not like it's on Spotify where you're just like, oh, I'll just ignore this. You're like, no, I had to put down like 15 bucks to buy this, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, you also turn around and go, hey, listen, I didn't like this. Why don't you take it and, and go dig on it? So it, like it really kept all of the, the uh, interest in in all sorts of music, I think, for a lot of people. Indeed. Indeed. So what about you? Like uh, what bands are you currently listening to that that aren't really or that you think people should be listening to? Uh, you know, let's see. Uh, they're not super unknown these days, but this band High Biz. I've been really into they're kind of like hardcore kids who are playing almost like a Brit pop influence type of thing. But the shows live have way more like of a hardcore show feel like the first record. A lot of the riffs sound like they could be Chromag's riffs, but they're played with a guitar tone that's really clean and drums that are, you know, a little more simplified. And, and those guys just are killing it. So I've been really into them. Um, this band Upon Stone. Uh, are kind of bringing back what I think of when I think of a lot of death, like mellow death, you know, like a lot of death, however you say it, mm -hmm. um, like that early, you know, Gothenburg sound. They kind of brought that back, but with like a little more punch. And they, I've been really into that band. Got to do a quick guest vocal on their record and was digging that. Uh, Gate Creeper uh, hits me in all the warm and fuzzy death metal spots because they just have that obituary guitar tone, bolt thrower riffs, you know, like just all the stuff that I grew up on, but again, putting their own twist on it. So yeah. it doesn't just sound like, you know, rehashed version of that. Um, so there's a three that kind of stand out. Uh, besides that, oh, me personally, dude, I, I'm probably just listening to a Grateful Dead show these days. <laughs> okay. That's so, a total that deadhead. Is so yeah, I mean, yeah. Way out of left field. Oh, no, I, I, when I was, uh, growing up, I not only was going to hardcore shows in Boston at the channel on the weekends, I was also going to see the dead and fish and partying in the parking lot and hanging out with the, with those crew. And I still, and still don't hit as many dead and company shows these days, but I still hit fish shows. And like that whole scene, like the musicianship level is what always drew me to that. Cause I was always in a kind of more progressive death metal and like, even like a lot of jazz fusion. And they brought a lot of that into the jam band world. And just, you know, everyone thinks of them as like mellower music, but man, especially fish, they would get dark and mean. And <laughs> when you get a, a arena full of people on high, high grade psychedelics and you start just doing like total deconstructed noise jams, like with like loops and just weird shit, like that's more evil than just dropping like a heavy riff, you know, like yeah. you're literally scrambling people's brains. <laughs> that Yeah, I bet, dude, I can only imagine. I, you know, I never yeah. really got into uh, Fish or the Grateful Dead or anything, but I think uh, Dead & Company doing uh, a show at the Sphere in Vegas would be a really fucking cool experience. Yeah. Some of my friends were at the Fish. They did four nights and they're like, yeah, like literally they're like, we're not the same people after walking out of that building. You know, like, like things have changed. <laughs> We've seen things. So that venue looks incredible, man. So. Yeah, we we were there. Uh, they were still building it, and like, what were we doing? Oh, we were going out to L.A. to see uh, Mr. Bungle, and our awesome. our flight in Vegas was like, okay, it's not going the rest of the way. So we we got a car and drove and drove by the Sphere, and I was like, man, that looks cool as fuck. Yeah, and the, the video footage was just insane. I, I webcast some of the fish shows, and uh, I, I even on my tv the graphics looked so crazy that you thought they were like moving out of the tv so i can't imagine being in that building immersed and that probably on some way too much you know lsd just losing your mind so yeah probably a lot of that going on oh there was a lot of that going on <laughs> for sure yeah it looked like a good time though indeed uh so shadows fall just announced you guys are gonna do another palladium show december 21st yes yes very excited and this is going to be a war within anniversary show so we will be playing the album in full uh we'll be doing other songs as well but like in the middle of the set we'll do a straight run through that uh we did mix up the track listing mostly due to tuning issues you know we have like two different tunings mm -hmm. but uh instead of having to change guitars every every song we mixed up the track listing a little bit 
but playing all those tunes, especially some deeper cuts like Ghost of Past Failure and Eternity is Within and and those who cannot speak were super fun, you know, because you, you know how it gets like when you're on tour, you kind of get stuck in a set list for a while and some songs just sort of fall out of the rotation. And as I mentioned before, we didn't practice it a ton. So us relearning an old song was, was usually not on the agenda. Um, so it's been awesome to kind of dust some of those off and uh, and play that whole record. And the Palladium is our home away from home. Like that place was always so good to us when we first started. We opened so many sick metal shows, you know, like always got such great opportunities to get in front of people that uh, it just, yeah, it feels like it feels like a insane high school reunion every time we're like in that building, you know? Yeah, that's fucking that's super cool. It's always nice to have that uh, comfortable feeling. You know, you get into the venue and everyone's like, hey, I ain't seen you in a minute. You're like, hey, yeah, what's yep. up? You oh, know, and our kid. Our families have kind of free run of the place. They just get to rage around. The kids are running around everywhere and like having a blast. So really looking forward to that. Now going to Massachusetts in the winter is not always the best of times, but you know, um, but uh, you know, everyone will be home for the holidays. So it's a perfect way to kind of get everyone together and just have a sick show. I was still working on the, the lineup for the rest of this, the show, but we're going to have some killer bands with us. I can't quite announce yet, but it's going to be a sick lineup, but really looking forward to doing the war within set. And, uh, and also busting out probably a few other random kind of cuts songs we haven't played in a while. So we want to make it a really special show. That's so, and cool. we may, we may do one or two more of the, those type of things uh, in the future, but that's right now that's, that's the big one. You know, we've got a few other festivals lined up, but that's our uh, big headlining show. That's, that's locked in for the year. So. Yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a really good show. Now, are you guys going to do the, the shadows fall beer again? I hope so. We've actually been talking to uh, Tin Bridge again to see if we could maybe do a different style uh, or, or just bring back that original brew. I, I love that one. It's funny. I'm more of a, a diverse beer drinker than some of the guys in the band. If it's up to them, they're just drinking Coors Light and, you know, like and whatever. So, like, we had to make something that was at least sort of larger ish, you know, like, like a little yeah. bit on the more drinkable side, whereas I would have probably gone all in with some insanity, you know. So I, I'm sure it'll be something more along those lines because, you know, I didn't want to make a beer that two thirds of the band wouldn't drink, you know? <laughs> right. So, uh, but yeah, I hope we bring that back. That was fun to have. And also just w nothing cooler than having your own like can of your own beer, you know? <laughs> yeah. No shit. It's like, mom, I really made it now. I got my own beer. <laughs> oh, uh, is there a band that, that you've played with that for you was like, man, I never thought we would be, at this level and we're fucking playing with these guys. There's been, we've been lucky where we played with almost every, uh, like long shot dream band. We've, you know, we played with Metallica, we played with, with uh Slayer, but the tour that we did, uh, 2005 Ozfest, where it was black Sabbath and iron maiden, like oh. co-headlining. It doesn't get any better than that. I, it, it's impossible. Right. Like, you know, it, the only thing that would have made it bigger is a Metallica headlined over that, you know, like, uh, it, that was to see maiden every night. And those guys would come and hang out in the dressing room. And I'm like, nickel McBrain is sitting on our beer cooler. Like, this is crazy. Like, I cannot believe this is happening. And turning around during our set and seeing like geezer Butler, like watching us play. I'm like, what, what is happening? Like, this is insane. So that, that was uh, a huge high point. For sure. So that's okay. Awesome. The other thing is, it wasn't a festival. You know, like some of these big festivals, you get to play with so many huge bands. But you know, it's it's six stages and everyone's all over the place. That was a straight tour where we got to know some of those guys and got to play with them every night and you know, get became friends with their crew and and really got to like watch them and kind of learn from them and and see how that you know entity like ran. You know, and and you know, picking uh, definitely stealing things like did you see you're like oh that's how you that's the best way to handle that that's you know these guys have got it all figured out like so things like that that was definitely the the peak of that so yeah it's got to make you feel good when these oh. these oh. I... wait we got the dog yelling at us now uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to make you feel good when you when these you know iconic artists are like watching you and chatting with you and you're like fuck there's no cooler feeling and, and it, it can be really stop you in your tracks. Like uh, 
on part of that, uh, I remember Velvet Revolver came out and I'm literally just rocking out like normal, go to grab my water and Slash is just like, what's up, man? And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> just, what? Like, Slash, like, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's as cool as it gets. And it never gets old. It's one of those things like, I, you know, we, I came from a very small hardcore scene where there wasn't a lot of separation between bands and, and, and audience. But I also grew up going to arena shows and like when a rock star is a rock star, man, you feel it. Like you, like, yeah. like you see a certain dude, like, yeah, like, yeah, Ozzy's, you know, walking through catering. You're like, holy shit, it's Ozzy. Like, and it doesn't matter how many days in a row it happens. Every time you're like, it's Ozzy. Like, oh my God, he's right there. He's getting jello. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> skin jello is it laced with cocaine i don't know yeah, yeah. well that's the thing that is one of the funny things about like when you tour with some of those older bands now you're like yeah the party's like over like we miss those days you know like, yeah. like it probably would have been a lot more fun in the late 70s but uh but it's still just mind-blowing that our music got us to a point where we're literally playing with some of the most legendary people of of all not just metal history of music history. It's great. It's crazy. So, yeah, for sure. So do you feel like shadows fall now is, has got a, a, a popularity uh, more than, than before? Uh, you know, I don't know about we maybe at our peak time, maybe not, but like our definitely we're seeing the resurgence of that kind of like new wave of American heavy metal, like sound that kind of like, you know, melodic metalcore stuff. Uh, it seems like it's coming back around. And I've seen that with a lot of genres, like new metals had a full resurgence. Yeah. And then, so there's a lot of interest. And some of it I equate with like the other people who are our age, who are our fans are like, you know what, man, I want to like recapture some of that like energy. I want to enjoy that music again. And they can also do things where they're like, hey, we can go on a Lamb of God headbangers boat cruise. Like we can afford to do that now. We have disposable income, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think our fan base is like, yeah, man, we'll travel out to see you guys at the Palladium or we'll go on the boat, you know, or we'll go to these festivals. So we've definitely seen a huge uptick because honestly, towards the end of our touring days, it was not like we, we knew we could have kept going and at a certain level, but we would have been like just keeping the boat afloat. So I think going away for a little while, having people get excited about it again, and now coming out with new music, I think has added a little, you know, jolt of energy into that. And 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 man, people have been just so supportive of us coming out and playing again. To to have that energy come back to you, like, it was super inspiring. Because you know, at first we're kind of like, ah, I guess no one cares. We'll just you know, let's go home. <laughs> now people are like, no, no, we 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 wanted you to come. We just you know. <laughs> so so now we're back. So. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, a lot of those people that were listening, you know, 14, 15 years ago, now they've got kids that are at the point where they're like, hey, listen, we're going to, I'm going to take you to a show. We're going to go have a good time. Totally. Like turning their kids onto their music and then like seeing them respond to it. And then th what's funny is I guarantee if those kids get into metal, then they're going to turn their parents onto newer metal bands that they wouldn't have heard about. So, you know, it's the cycle of life. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fucking beautiful thing. I mean, I love it. I love taking my kids. Really, it's only my daughter that goes, but she's shit. She's 17 now. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, take yeah, it. Absolutely. Like I and some of my favorite memories with her are going to shows like you mentioned Slash. We let the kids pick our 2017 summer vacation and we fucking drove up to Minneapolis to see Guns N' Roses and Deftones at in Viking Stadium. Oh, that's a hell of a family vacay. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just just a lot of fun. I I, I think so. Yep. I think people are are, you know, our age are getting to that point where the kids can actually go to the shows and enjoy it, and they're not. You know, totally to like that's been such a fun thing. Is and it, what's great is I've also not like my son Judah. He's pretty into metal but he's also gone his own direction with it where he's like OG power metal guy now. And I don't know how it happened, but he's all about accept and man of war and like annihilator. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you know, like I always dug those bands, but I wasn't like listening to him. He found them on his own and was went 
all in, you know, and I'm like, holy shit, like, <laughs> when did you become like a German power metal guy? This is crazy, you know, uh, but it's, you know, I, I, he just was into listening to what I was listening. I was like, oh, kind of got into the vibe of it, but then found his own vibe, you know, like it was like, oh, man, I like stuff like this. So it's cool. Although I've spoiled my kids where they think every show they're going to be backstage, yeah. you know, where I'm like, sometimes we'll go to a regular show. I'm like, no, no, we're just we're going through the front door. We had to buy tickets, you know, <laughs> we can't No, you can't go on the side of the stage, you know, because their first few shows, they were just like, oh, this is how life works. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, we got a VIP all access laminate. And I'm like, no, it's not always like that. <laughs> not always. It would be nice, but it's not. So with, exactly. with, him, with Judah being into power metal, there's a couple of bands you should um, check out with him. One is called Finality. Uh Tony Asta, awesome. yeah, Tony Asta from Battlecross, uh, sings in that band. Oh, Battlecross dudes rule, man! They're the best. So, yeah. oh, he's doing some power metal stuff. I'll have yep. to check that out for sure. Yeah, That's fucking awesome. love I'm that band. That. The other one is Idol Throne. Um, they're from up up around like Gas City or like like Northwest Indiana. Sick, awesome, man! I'll have to check those out. So, That's yeah, killer. Both really, yeah, man. really he, good. If it was up to dance. him, he'd just be wielding a sword and like fighting the enemies of metal. Like he's all about it. Fuck yeah. That, <laughs> buy him a fucking new sword. Get him a, a good four I, footer. What's funny is my wife bought him a spear at like some like, you know, fair the other day. And I'm like, really? The, I'm not the one who bought him the spear like you did? You know, like, <laughs> that, that's fucking cool as shit. And it's, you know, I, I think as a parent, it's really great to see kids form their own identity and start going their own path. You're like, Oh shit. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause you know, I wanted to turn them on to stuff that I dig, but I'm not going to force feed it. If they don't, you know, like, like my daughter would be like, Oh, it's cool. But she's found her own stuff. Whereas Judah got into metal. But like I said, then he went his own direction. I'm like, that's even cooler. I'm like, that's, yeah. you know, huh. so, yeah, a lot you know, of love, but you know, whatever they're into, that's also, that was the thing is my parents were never into my music but they supported me from day one and were very into the idea of music they just loved that i was like that excited about it and my dad would drive overcast to some of our first shows because like i said mike was the only one with a license and uh they to this day they still come out to any show we play in massachusetts and you know are always there so it's cool but uh so i will always so whatever direction they want to go i'll be supporting granted you know i'll keep in trying to influence them with my own music but you know well you got then to right to yeah yeah, yeah I'll, one of my proudest dad moments is i come around the corner in the morning before school judah has halloween i want out on the on the tv the video and he's holding his hand up doing the long scream at the end like you know and just holding it and I, yeah like forming the orb in his hand and i'm like yeah. oh my god i've done everything right as a parent <laughs> yeah that's so mine was uh i, I love like like traditional metal and we're driving through Illinois one night and my daughter, she was God, Bailey was probably, I don't know. She, she had to be 10 or 11 at that point. We're driving through Illinois and she goes, do you know what my favorite band is? Night demon. Like, ah, oh, that's cool. Like I really <laughs> dig those guys, you know? And the next thing she goes, you know what my favorite song is? And my wife goes, what? She goes, Satan. My wife goes, oh my God, don't ever tell your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was that's like, so awesome. Yeah. You know, oh, that, that's one thing I kind of have to remember sometimes too, because like I'll look over and Judah's wearing, you know, like a, like a shirt from like, he'll take one of my t-shirts and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, the back of that is probably not okay for second grade you know, like elementary school uh, gear, like, you know, it's a cool shirt. I was like, yeah, you can wear it whenever you want. Just probably not to school. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Impaled Nazarene is not going to go over well with the, uh, with your teachers. <laughs> no. No, and I don't want to call today. Like we got things going yeah, on. Exactly. I don't want to explain it. It's just too much. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, Brian, I know you, I know you're at a pool party. Uh, I don't want to keep you all night. I greatly appreciate your time. I love that you took some time out to to come chat with little old me tonight. Oh, dude, it's been my pleasure, man. Thank you for uh, helping to spread the word about Shadows Fall being back. It was a great conversation, man. And uh, much love to you and your family. And hopefully uh, we'll see you at a show sometime down the road. Absolutely, dude. Have a great night. Indeed, man. Take care. See ya.